in bottom-up processing, you encounter a stimulus and you receive it through one of your senses and your perception is shaped by your interpretation of the sensory information. So the information sort of goes um, bottom up to your brain. So in phonetics, that's sort of like listening to sound and trying to figure out what am I hearing? When we talk about top down processing, that is when our brain kind of has a set of has information that um, can help us interpret the sensory information that we are um, receiving. So your book likes to do this for you and gives you some top-down information. So when we talk about um, the allophone, um, uh, the allophones of A and A, uh, the diphthong and the monophthong, they like to give you some um, environments where one or the other is more likely. So when we have um, uh, uh, unstressed syllables, uh, and, and closed, uh, they tend to be a, the monophthong, like, uh, what does your book have? Oh, um, chaotic, cha cha chaotic, or gyrate, gyrate, ray, ray, okay? Um, if the stress falls on that syllable, or it occurs at the end of a word, we tend to use the diphthong, like Monday, day. And the tongue is actually gonna go into the articulatory position for a, and then glide into i, a, a. It's important for you to know that this top-down information is just um, a set of guidelines to help you know what you're perceiving. They're not rules. Humans love to break rules. So um, people can switch these. Um, you could say, um, oh my gosh, it was so chaotic, chaotic, where you actually use the diphthong. It's possible. Um, and in some dialects, you might find that people favor the monophthong, like Monday. Yeah, we, we're gonna go on Monday. Um, and they use a monophthong at the end of a, um, a word. I'm not gonna be super picky about this difference unless it's in a really marked position. So if the speaker on a file says Monday and you put Monday, um, you're giving them a Minnesotan accent. Um, so in that case, that would, that would probably be marked incorrect. Um, in some other w cases where it's really just too hard to call, um, you know, these are allophones and I'm not gonna be super picky about it. Um, the other thing I wanna tell you about top-down information is that our expectations based on spelling can shape what we perceive. And this is where top-down information actually interferes with our ability to hear. So do your best to forget the spelling um, and really go with, um, the bottom-up information that you're receiving, and then some of the top-down information that the book is providing to help you know what you're hearing.